Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our discussion on operating and reimbursable expenses in Design Manager. My name is Brad, and I'll be hosting the demonstration today. If you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to enter them into the questions pane on your GoToWebinar panel. If the question is outside of the scope of today's discussion, please email them to support at designmanager.com. And lastly, if you miss a portion of the webinar or want to review any of our past discussions, go to our YouTube channel at Design Manager Inc., Design Manager INC. And here you can see all sorts of topics, including our quick start videos, short helpful tutorials, and more comprehensive discussions in our webinars, easily categorized under project management and accounting courses for you, and all of our weekly webinars are shown as well. In this week's webinar, we'll be reviewing operating expenses, but with particular attention to recording reimbursable expenses, which will be remitted to the client for repayment. So let's get started. Now, essentially, operating expenses represent the bills, charges, invoices necessary to run your business, such as your rent, phone and internet, insurance, etc. You may, however, have additional expenses, such as transportation, shipping and freight charges, restocking fees, professional services, etc., that you ultimately will be invoicing your client after you pay the uh, respective vendor. These are known as reimbursable expenses, as the client will repay or reimburse the company for the original charge. Let's discuss entering conventional operating expenses first, after which we'll focus on reimbursable expenses. As with so many facets of running your business, formulating a consistent methodology for recording your expenses will make the process run much smoother over time. To do so, there are a few pertinent questions to answer. First, what accounts are necessary to record the expenses and provide yourself and your accounting professional with the proper amount of information to analyze the financial state of the company? To answer that question, let's go to our account glossary. So we're gonna to go to our accounting tab, obviously, jump over to the general ledger frame and click the accounts button, which gets us to our account glossary. Now expense accounts are generally in the 60,000 range. So let's jump down there and see what type of accounts are available for us. And as you can see, we have your uh, standard payroll accounts, some uh, utility accounts, rent, uh, phone and internet, et cetera. Now, one of the first uh, considerations would be how many accounts are appropriate for your company? Do you want to keep your chart of accounts and subsequently your income statement simpler with less accounts? Or do you want a greater level of financial, de uh, financial detail, which would require more accounts? For example, we have accounts like telephone and internet, as I just said, and office supplies. Well, conceivably, those could be under the same account of office expenses if we wanted to but we'd rather actually break that uh, that level of detail out by having separate accounts another consideration what about business income tax deductions be sure to check with your accounting professional so that you have all the accounts that he or she specifically needs to record expenses that can be deducted from your income tax responsibility and when doing so be sure to have the account inform you precisely what type of charges should be recorded, recorded into those accounts? So there's no guesswork or gray errors in months to come. If they tell you exactly what types of um, bills should go into each account, it really makes all the data entry much easier. For example, let's take a, let's take a look at, a, well, I don't know, about meals and entertainment. Great, great example. What does the account specifically want recorded in there? Should meals be separated from entertainment, which may be uh, going to trade shows or uh, open houses, those types of things? What activities are appropriately to be deducted in such a manner? What type of meals? Should we classify client-related um, meals versus office-related meals differently? All of those are questions that should be referred to with your accounting professional, so you have exactly the accounts that you want on your, uh, your account glossary. Another thought. What's important to have individually recorded versus aggregated with other expenses, like uh, advertising? We have a single advertising account listed here, but what if I wanted more detail where I'd have um, advertising broke into uh, expenses for my website or social media, direct mailings, etc.? 
all very important questions when crafting the chart of accounts to meet your individual needs. Now let's briefly discuss creating a new account. All we have to do is easily click the add button and that gets us to our new account window. Let's say that we have been generally recording all of our catalogs under office supplies, but since that seems to be a larger and larger expense, maybe we want our own account for just catalogs. So since we want to keep it close to office supplies, let's use an account number that's right by it. So if office supplies are 62100, how about 62105? Obviously the account number would have to be unique, of course. The name, catalogs, fairly simple. And then the account type. You can see all of the standard account types listed and ours would be operating expense. And notice when I select operating expense, I have some additional options available. Since um, an expense is an income statement account, we're allowed to use budgets if desired. So we can budget how much we ex uh, expect to uh, spend in each of our expense accounts. And you can do so simply by entering in a monthly budget, let's say $100. Or if you have a yearly budget that you want prorated, you can use the distribute button put in the total amount, and Design Manager will distribute it for you. We also have a department list, listing and a department designation. Now, you would use departments if your company has multiple revenue centers, like a commercial department, a residential department, a showroom, etc. In those cases, you would have an expense account, perhaps for each of the individual departments. So you may have multiple advertising accounts, multiple meals and entertainment, et cetera. There's also the option for closing the account as of a fiscal month. Now, obviously we're creating a new account, so we would not want to close it and leave it open. But if you ever get to a situation where you want to uh, cease activity into a particular account, you can select the designated fiscal month and Design Manager will prevent users from entering any information into the software with a fiscal period after your selected date, basically locking it as of a particular fiscal period. And if we go ahead and click OK, there is our catalogs account right beneath our office supplies account. Now, if accounts are the first tier of analysis, another tier perhaps would be the degree of vendor information. What, what information do we want to record on the vendor level? For example, we might get office supplies from Staples, Office Max, or any number of such stores, but do we really need vendors for each one of these? Or could we simply have a generic office supplies vendor? Having a single vendor to record these types of purchases is very convenient, particularly since office supplies are so frequently paid uh, via credit card or debit card, thereby really making multiple vendors unnecessary. But however, on the flip side, if an opportunity ever arises where a, a Staples or a, a WB Mason representative comes in and wants to compete against um, other office supply uh, firms and consolidate all of your printing and uh, office supplies, et cetera, getting that information for them will be very difficult since we've been putting in all of our charges and, and bills using a single uh, aggregated vendor versus uh, uh, individual vendors for each of them. Let's say that we uh, just saw a commercial for uh, postage online or stamps online, and we wanted to print our own uh, stamps in the office. So we sign up for that account. Well, now we're going to need a, a vendor to do so. So how do we create a vendor? Very simple. We can stay right in our accounting tab and go under list and glossaries and we can see vendors. Well, you can also ac access the vendor glossary from the project tab and click vendors here as well. Either way, it gets you to the vendor glossary. To create a new vendor, again, we just click our add button and that gets us to our brand new vendor payee window. The code, let's, um, since stamps.com is owned by the post office, let's call it USPS. There'll be the ones uh, to which we are pay making our payments. And we could just call it U. S, oops, USPS stamps online or something to that effect. Now, we're going to be paying this through 
the uh, stamps.com website. So we won't actually be sending checks, or if so, it will be very rare to do so. So in our case, we don't need to enter in a vendor or city, I mean, pardon me, the address, city, state, zip, contact, that type of information. Remember, in Design Manager, you only have to enter in the information that is applicable. You don't have to feel obligated to put in all of the information simply because we have fields to do so. A type or category. Let's say that um, this is going to be an operating vendor, and that would be for shipping. Fantastic. Or I could actually use office supplies entirely up to me. Or I can make a new one for perhaps postage, even better. Account number. Well, that might be handy. I could put my account number that I've just created. And I could use the option to include account number on check. Again, we'll be paying online for the most part or th through one of our credit cards, just in case I would like to have that printed on my check uh, no matter what. Website, www.stamps.com. There we go. Now, let's jump over to the defaults tab momentarily because we have a default expense account available to us. Now this is really one of the most underutilized yet extremely helpful settings you can enter. Now whenever I, I go to paystamps.com, uh, I'm going to be asked for an account to record the expense. And one of the most common topics for our technical support team is people asking uh, what, what account should I use or uh, have already entered the wrong account and need to correct it. So by having the proper expense account stored here, all of that guesswork is removed later down the road. And we can just go ahead and use our postage account. Further, I'm gonna use the option to prevent that vendor from ever being used when I'm entering in my specifications or stock items, et cetera. I'm never going to have a PO for a USPS. So by selecting this option, I'll prevent a user from accidentally using our USPS vendor when they're going ahead and entering in their specifications. Another very handy setting. And if we go ahead and click OK, there we go. There is our uh, vendor for our stamps.com. Uh, so we've got our stamps online account and uh, we let's say we already funded it with uh, $50 and we used our American Express uh, card to do so. Well, we may as well record this expense in Design Manager right away. All vendor deposits, final bills or invoices, uh, operating expenses, etc., are all entered in the exact same way in your Design Manager Pro Cloud. You go to your accounting tab. Under your accounts payable frame, the first option is for bills and invoices. And that leads us to our vendor deposit, invoices, and operating expenses window where as you can see, we can easily begin making those payable entries. So let's go ahead and add our entry for our, our stamps.com. So we'll click our add button, which then brings us to our vendor deposit invoice and operating expense window. And the only option here is to select the proper type of entry we are making. We have options for deposit on project purchase order, invoice on project purchase order, both of which have their own uh, webinars on our YouTube channel, of course. But in our case, we're going to be entering in an expense. And when we select that, the window uh, sort of uh, refreshes with the proper information to record an operating expense. First off, our vendor, let's go ahead and use our brand new stamps online vendor, of course. The invoice number, there may not be an invoice number. It's going to be a monthly charge or whenever I go to uh, uh, replenish the account. So I could use a more descriptive information for my invoice number as one is required. And it could simply be, how about initial account funding. The invoice date, that's the date that I funded the account. We can just go ahead and say that was today. Same with the due date. The transaction description I'll also use as an initial account funding. And now, as I alluded to before, every expense has to have at least one account associated with it. To enter those accounts and the amount itself, we're going to click the Add button as indicated by the green plus sign on the right of the window, which brings us to our vendor invoice distribution um, window. 
And conveniently, there is our postage expense account 62500 already being listed for us. Remember, I associated that account with our USPS vendor on the defaults tab, and it's taking all the guesswork out for me. We put in $50, so we'll change our amount or cost and go ahead and click OK. We can see our amount due calculating for us in the bottom right corner. And we also have some other features here. We have our discount amount and our days to take. Now, these are not commonly applied to expenses, uh, but will represent the amount of a potential discount uh, uh, provided by the vendor and the number of days within uh, the payments must be received in order for that discount to be applied. That's more common for vendors uh, when you're purchasing through them for project-related goods and services. So I go into greater detail on that topic in our webinar, Accounting Course 5, Vendor Invoices. I'll talk about the discount and days to take, the days to take in greater detail there. We have our Pay With option. Now there's always a selection for a check, which would really represent any payment out of one of our uh, cash checking accounts. It could be a check itself, it could be a wire transfer or electronic payment, etc. If I did pay online through my, uh, my bank's bill pay services or had USPS uh, take the funds out automatically, I could use the hand check wire transfer and simply input the, the date it was removed and the appropriate account. But we have already said that we put our $50 on our American Express card. So we're going to tell Design Manager that um, we are doing so. Now, I always like to point out that I'm not actually charging my American Express card when I'm selecting this pay with. I'm simply telling Design Manager that I did pay in that method or I will be paying uh, in the near future. Now, uh, uh, by the way, Design Manager Pro Cloud does not come configured with a credit card account. I've actually created our American Express example. And for a detailed discussion on how to do so, uh, check out another webinar, Setting Up and Using Credit Cards, where I go into that procedure uh, in great detail as well. And lastly, we even have a notes area where I could put in some additional information about the bill itself. I could use my insert date function and put in um, begin using stamps dot com and my initials or something to that effect and upon clicking OK I now have my um, my expense ready for my stamps uh, dot com purchase now it's very important to remember the expense is not yet recorded into our accounting records we still need to post or process the transaction which we'll do so shortly Professional cloud, Design Manager Professional Cloud is designed for the larger design firms who may handle voluminous amounts of um, accounting transactions. This allows us to enter in all of our bills and expenses and vendor invoices, et cetera, and then batch, post, or record them uh, when we're ready. Now we can see some other features here as well. We have our total purchases convenient being accumulated for us in the top right corner. We have the fiscal month. This is uh, the period into which the expense is going to be recorded on your financials uh, in comparison to the invoice date Excel itself, which sort of represents the calendar date of the transaction. From here, if I noticed in any error, I could edit the expense before I uh, go ahead and uh, officially recording it. I could delete it if it's a duplicate or an error, etc. I can even conveniently print out a purchases journal by using our journal button. And we have a few options here, show item detail, where well, there's no uh, project items associated with our expense, so we can leave that set to no. But we can go ahead and show the notes option. And there is our purchases posting list. Now, some firms procedurally will always print out or save a copy of their posting list on their uh, computer or network prior to posting the transactions just for their records. And you'll see every transaction listed, including the transaction, the vendor, of course, invoice and due date, invoice number or PO number, payment description, account and amount, et cetera. There's our notes for us. And then there are accounting summaries along the bottom as well. What accounts are going to be affected by all these transactions? And even 
any effect upon our work and process account as well. So I go ahead and print this if desired. And at this point, I'm uh, satisfied with our uh, uh, expense for stamps online. So I'm going to head and click our post button. And when we do so, we're always asked, are you sure you wish to post these transactions into the selected fiscal period? And we are, so we'll hit yes. And now we can see that our transaction has dropped off of our new tab and is now listed on our existing tab with every other purchase or bill or invoice or deposit we've ever recorded in history. And from here, we have options as well. Provided I had not yet written a check uh, or if I have indicated payment on credit card, I could go ahead and edit the transaction and make any adjustments that I may have needed to, to correct the transaction. If it's completely a duplicate or unnecessary, I could void or re remove it in its entirety. And I can even use a convenient details button, which will show the accounts themselves that are being affected. You can see that we're increasing our liability to our American Express card, and we're also increasing our uh, expense account, our postage expense account by uh, $50. And we can even see a history of our notes here as well. Very easy. Now, you probably have several expenses that occur on a monthly or regular basis. Rather than entering each of these manually each month or each uh, as necessary, you can use a feature called our recurring operating expenses to easily record and add these uh, charges. I've created a very simple example for our monthly rent payment. And to access these recurring expenses, we're going to use our recurring button. And that gets us to our recurring operating expenses. Again, I simply have a single example here, but as you find yourself entering in bills for particular charges repeatedly, it's very good business practice to add them to your recurring operating expense window just to make your data entry fast as accurate as possible. Let's go ahead and edit our recurring expense for our real estate company to see what information is on the recurring operating expense. And quite honestly, it looks like a very uh, similar window to our operating expense window, which logically uh, would make sense. So we have our vendor associated with our real estate bill. The invoice number I've purposely less very, left very uh, vague. So I, I may want to change that as we uh, will see momentarily. I'll same with the transaction description. And just like our operating expense for our postage, for our stamps online, we have to have at least one account distribution assigned with it as well. So by having this recurring expense as well, I'm also uh, being sure that I'm always using the proper account when I'm paying my rent, basically standardizing that procedure. And I could even use my discount and days to date to take as well. Lastly, we can even set a reminder so that we ensure that we don't miss uh, entering in or paying uh, our monthly rent, which of course is important. So if I click our reminder button, what that does is it brings us to our to-do list, uh, our to-do list task window, automatically saying make payment for monthly rent. It's taking the transaction description and conveniently putting in the subject for me. And I could set a reminder. Well, let's say that we've already paid August, but we want to have our reminders begin in September. Let's say we set that for September 3rd. At 9 a.m., it's going to recur monthly and we'll keep going until I stop it. And I have all my information for my men vendor as well. And if I click OK, I can now see that on my to-do list tasks and appointments for me as a reminder will appear in Design Manager on September 3rd at 9 a.m. reminding me to go ahead and get that bill ready for our rent. And just by adding the reminder, we can see that in our reminder column now as well. So if we really need to go ahead and make our monthly rent, we want to tag or choose the appropriate uh, expense or expenses. You can do multiple ones at once and click the choose button. And that will automatically convert our recurring expense into an actual expense on our new tab of the vendor deposit invoice and operating expense window. Very commonly, I may want to make a few subtle changes to the, the entry. So I'm going to go ahead and edit. 
I'll change my rent to August rent. I'll leave today's date. Everything else is just fine. I'll leave that as set to pay with check as I generally uh, send a check into the real estate group. And I can go ahead and post. And now in this case, on our payments and checks window, we can see there is our check waiting for us to go ahead and uh, print for our real estate group to pay uh, the rent. For more information on uh, printing checks and other methods of paying your vendors, we have another webinar under Accounting Course 6, Paying Bills, which we just recently re-recorded as well. Okay, fantastic. Now, that's a, a fairly in-depth discussion on creating standard operating expenses using uh, our stamps online and our recurring uh, rent payments as examples. But now let's move on to reimbursable expenses. Now, by definition, a reimbursable expense is going to be charges that we incurred while doing our business for the client, but for which the client will ultimately repay us. The charge will initially reduce your net income until you invoice the client for the expense, and then your net income will come back to its original amount prior to the charge. Basically, we're just passing on that cost, and we're expecting to be repaid for it. But there are many variations on how we can configure our accounts and our sales category to handle reimbursable expenses. So you can choose the method or combination of methods, quite honestly, that best fits you and your accounting professional's needs. Now I'll describe the process of entering in a reimbursable expense um, in detail in just a bit. But it's, as I said before, it's imp extremely important to formulate a methodology for recording uh, our reimbursable expenses so that our needs, our client needs, and our accountant professional's needs are all met. And here are a few common methods that we've seen employed in our experience. The first method is the simplest to both configure and utilize and represents a tried and true um, procedure for handling reimbursable expenses, but it also provides the least amount of information for financial analysis in the future. So there's a give and take there. Now, what we're going to, do, going to do is we're going to use the reimbursable expenses account as a quote unquote swap account where we simply continually increase and decrease the balance when we record bills from the vendor and invoice the client respectively. This is particularly convenient if you don't plan on uh, marking up the expense to the client. So let's take a look at how I've configured this particular method. Let's go to our account glossary again. And we can see I've created an expense account, 69901 reimbursable method one. And with that expense account, I've attached it to a brand new sales category that I've created as well. So let's go to our sales category glossaries. And we can see I've got my sales category of reimbursable method one listed with a code of RE1. And if we edit that particular sales category, let's take a look. Now notice, all of my sales or revenue and my COGS or expense account are associated with the exact same expense account. So basically, all of the activity upon recording the bill from the vendor and upon invoicing the client for the expense are going to go in and out of the account. Okay, now uh, I've actually made separate projects for recording my reimbursable expenses for each of my current jobs. Now it's certainly not necessary to do so as you can record expenses directly into your traditional projects. But for our case, it does aid um, in the clarity of our discussion today. So you can see on my projects window, I have reimbursable projects for my Pennington home, my Brigantine Beach home, and my Holson Pocono home as well. So let's take a look at an expense that I've already entered. So let's go back to our accounting tab, back to our bills and invoices. We'll go to our existing tab. And let's take a look at 
our expense here. Now we can see this is a, an operating expense that I've recorded as an example using method one. Now notice that on our operating expense window now, we see the account that I've created, the amount, but we also have the project code associated with it. Again, I'll go into great detail on this momentarily, but if we look in our specification window for that project, here is my reimbursable expense method one item. And you can see in this case, I have the same amount of $50 for both the cost and the price. I'm literally passing on that cost. I was charged $50 from the vendor and I'm passing that on to the client for reimbursement. And you can see I've even created an invoice for it. So let's take a look. And here is our $50 for our reimbursable amount. So I was charged $50 and may create an invoice for the client for repayment as well. And let's take a look at how that functions. So let's look at our account inquiry under our GL reports account inquiry, which I've conveniently linked to my favorites tab just by using the add to favorites button. And we can see, let's make this a little bit larger. Here is the cost going into that account or increase as it's debiting the expense account, that's actually increasing the balance when we put the bill in. And then we can see the invoice to the client actually reducing that amount. So we're literally in and out or swapping our, our values into that single account. Some of the benefits of this method are that it's extremely simple. We can just use the same singular sales category when recording the bill and we're guaranteed to have accurate accounting. Can also use uh, monitor the account itself to ensure that I'm properly invoicing my client. If there's a balance in our expense account, I can run the account inquiry report as we just did and see what needs to be invoiced to the client because those will be outstanding charges. And at the end of the year, if there's a positive value or a positive number in that account, well, that means that I didn't invoice everything to the client. If there's a negative value, it means, well, I actually made a profit on reimbursables by invoicing more than I expected to. And if it's at zero at the end of the year, fantastic. I recorded all my bills properly and I invoiced the client exactly for that amount. There are limitations, of course, and the main one being um, a limited amount of potential analysis. Now, if I wanted to get deeper uh, analytics on that particular account or how my reimbursables work for the year, I'd really have to run reports based upon the vendors used to track those type of reimbursables as they're all being consolidated into that singular account. I can't simply look at my various accounts and see, hey, where is the lion's share of my reimbursables stemming from? Okay, now a second method, very similar to the first, but utilizes a set or a pair of accounts, one for the expense itself and one to record the revenue when the charge is invoiced to the client. Now this allows us to easily view the total expenditure and the accrued revenue on the income statement or other reports as well, of course. This method works particularly well when you want to perhaps add a fee or a markup onto the expense. So there'll be an accumulated income generated when um, uh, from the reimbursable expenses themselves. So again, let's hop over to our accounts glossary. And we can see now for my method two, I have a single expense account along with a single revenue account. And whenever I use pairings of accounts, be it revenue and expenses or revenue of cost of goods sold, I'd be sure to try to keep the name similar or identical is my preferred method actually. 
And with those accounts, I've created a corresponding sales category, of course, RE2, our reimbursable method two, which utilizes that new revenue account for reimbursables and is still using our uh, single expense account as well. And just as we did in our last example, let's take a look at a bill I've already entered. And here's a miscellaneous expense for method two. And you can see, let's use our details. That gets us right to, it's created an item for me in our, our Carter uh, reimbursable project under item two. And we can see that I've placed this on my American Express and the cost has gone into work in process, which is absolutely what will happen. When I initially record the expense from the vendor, it's gonna go first into work in process by default. Only upon invoicing the client does that activity come out of work in process into our appropriate expense account. Now that may sound a bit confusing, so I do have another webinar on the work in process where we go into that entire discussion in detail. It's a very critical concept uh, to accrual accounting, which is the method that design manager employs and is the method that is uh, recommended for interior design industry. Okay. Now let's take a look at that item in our project specifications. And there's our reimbursable expense method too. Now in this case, we have a cost and we've marked it up to a degree just to uh, further ensure that we're getting, uh, being, we're recouping any potential uh, lost revenue on freight or any uh, billing or, or um, transportation, those types of things. So it is common that certain reimbursable expenses may be marked up. So we have a cost of $50 and a price of 65. And if we look at our invoice 10,005, uh, 10, we can see that's exactly how it appears on the invoice as well. And now we're charging 65 to the client. Now let's take a look at that income statement, also known as the profit and loss, which is under our general ledger, financial statements, income statements, and there's a variety of types there, monthly, quarterly, yearly, and comparative, depending on what type of analysis you're looking for. I've even linked my monthly to my favorites as well. And let's take a look at how that transaction appears on our income statement. Well, here's our reimbursable method to revenue or sales account, and there's our $65. And down in our expenses, we have our reimbursable method two for our $50. So the difference between those two values is indeed our profit. In this case, it would be $50. Benefits here, again, simplicity. We're using a single sales category when recording the, uh, the expense and we're guaranteed accurate accounting. And rather than passing all of the activity through a single account like we saw in the first method, we're gonna store the revenue and expense separately so we can review those with greater ease on our income statement as you can see here. The difference again between the accounts is our uh, net gain or, or loss. Limitations, well, we still have a limited amount of potential analysis. Again, we had have to go back to almost the vendor transactions themselves in order to see what type of reimbursables are recorded through those accounts as again, they're simply become uh, being accumulated in a single uh, expense account for the cost itself and in a single revenue account upon invoicing the client. Now, the third method requires more initial configuration, but does provide a greater deal of uh, information for financial analysis in the future. In these cases, we're gonna have a single reimbursable revenue account paired with a series of reimbursable expense account representing the various sources of the expenses. This allows us to track exactly 
what type of expense is being recorded and compare it to the total expenses of the revenue accrued so we can monitor that the expenses are being passed to the client properly and really track a net income or loss in those expenses. So let's see how I configure this. Back to our account glossary. And I set up an example under transportation. Oh, and notice here, I have a account 69903 transportation reimbursable. But I also have another travel and transportation account. This would be for internal or uh, business or business use only transportation. So I can differentiate between the two of them. Now that's not necessary, but it does again have the benefit of uh, allowing me to analyze, hey, what type of travel and transportation was just for the business going to market, those types of things versus transportation that I ultimately uh, reimbursed to the client. And we can see I have a reimbursable account method three that's going to handle all of the revenue from those types of transactions. Again, a single revenue account or sales account with multiple accounts for the expenses themselves. And likewise, I've created a sales category uh, to handle uh, transportation in this case. And there it is. You can see transportation reimbursable. And I have a shipping reimbursable, et cetera. And here we use our singular reimbursable account for our revenue, but have the appropriate expense account listed. So we have our transportation um, uh, reimbursable for our transportation sales category. And of course, for our shipping, we would simply change that to our shipping reimbursable, yet maintain the same reimbursable uh, revenue account. Okay. And again, let's take a look at one of the examples I've already entered. So here we have an expense using our method three for some uh, transportation, taxi, et cetera. And we can see I'm using that very specific transportation reimbursable account, creating another item into our Carter reimbursable project. which we can see right here. Now we're using taxi, a little bit more information uh, to both to the client and for our demonstration here. And I'm even, like our last example, marking up the transportation just a little bit. We can see over on invoice 10,006, how that would appear. There's our reimbursable to the client. All we're seeing is the price to them and any associated tax if necessary. And in this case, if we review our income statement again, now we can see our, reimb our single reimbursable revenue account for method three. There's our 3250, which we invoice the client, but we can see our cost of 25 being stored in that very specific transportation reimbursable account. So the benefit here, now we can track the exact expenses that we uh, were used to reimburse, uh, that we used to create or that we were, were reimbursed to the client, but we're keeping all the revenue in a single account for simplicity. Now, yes, we could absolutely have pairs of revenue accounts for all those reimbursables, but that tends to be a bit excessive unless there's particular uh, types of reimbursables that you want tracked in that manner. And I can just still monitor the total revenue against the total reimbursable expenses to be sure that we're passing in, uh, passing through, or even marking up the expenses properly. Limitation here is really that it, it takes a bit more configuration to create the accounts and sales categories and with uh, with more sales categories and, and more accounts that does tend to uh, potentially lead to user error when selecting the proper sales category but that's a you know uh, a, a limitation that you'd have to weight against 
all of the financial analysis that you could get out of this method. So any combination of these methods we've seen employed, all of them have, uh, because again, benefits and limitations. And you really should sit down with your accounting professional to really develop what works both for you, your clients, and for the accountant's needs as well. And equally important in devising a strategy to record the expenses is creating the proper framework to bill your clients for these expenses. The fundamental question here is, how do you and your client want the reimbursable expenses to be displayed on the client invoice? Now, answering that question allows us easily to implement a plan to properly record the expenses so they're billed to the client in the desired manner. The first method would be to simply create single items for each of the expenses, all of which will be itemized or listed individually in the client invoice. So let's jump over to our specifications window. Let's take a look at our Hilson reimbursables. And as you can see, I've created opera, operating expenses, reimbursable expenses for a few taxi transportations and some shipping through FedEx. Upon doing so, I decided to make single items for each one of them. Let's add another one to, as an example where we can really explore the process of creating a, a reimbursable expense using our operating expense window. So as I said before, any type of operating expenses are gonna go through our bills and invoices button to get to our vendor deposit invoice and operating expense window. We're gonna add, just like we did on a traditional expense, we're going to select expense. Let's say we had an Uber ride. Invoice number, that could just be the date of the service. Let's say that was um, Uber ride on, 8-4, we'll use the invoice date for that as well. Transaction description will make that the same. Go ahead and click our add button. We'll use, oops. Now in this case, notice before we were using non-project. That means standard operating expense as is our example from the beginning of the discussion. When we want to create a reimbursable expense, we wanna change the type from non-project to project related. And you can see that the window immediately refreshes itself and allows us to enter in additional information. So first, the sales category. Now let's, uh, since we were using method three most recently, let's use that one. And I do like a little bit more of accounting detail. So this would be our transportation reimbursable sales category. We'll put in the amount of the Uber ride. Doesn't matter, how about 2327. We'll select our project. This was our Hilson reimbursables. Upon selecting the project, design manager asks you, do you want to uh, update the uh, markup discount, uh, fee percent, taxable, et cetera, options that are associated with this project? By hitting yes here, doing so is gonna maintain our pricing model that we've crafted for our Hilson project. Go ahead and hit yes. Now we have the option to create a new item. That's exactly what we decided to do. We're gonna individually uh, list all of our reimbursable expenses on the invoice, so we'll leave that set for new item. Location. We can go ahead and use our reimbursable expense location. Merchandise is our selected component type. Now, if we look at our, if we refer back to our sales category for our transportation reimbursable, the component type itself doesn't really matter as far as the accounting goes. We're gonna use the same accounts no matter which component type I've selected, but if I have a different tax structure or a different markup structure that I want to employ on this charge, then I could change the type. Let's say that I track all of these charges through installation or labor. And when I select that, again, I'm asked if I want to change my markup or taxable settings. I hit yes, and notice that the markup went from 30 to 15. 
Uh, the taxable option. Now, uh, often such reimbursable charges already include tax. So you may want to make the reimbursement um, non-taxable. Or in our case, since we are marking up the charge, and you can see we have our cost listed, a markup of 15%, yields a price to decline of 26 uh, 76. Now I've already paid tax on the 2327, but there has not yet been any tax on that markup amount. So I could use the cost is non-taxable option and only charge tax on the uh, the markup value, not the entire 2676. The bypass working option, the bypass um, working process option listed below. What this uh, gives us the opportunity to do is, as we saw before, when I first record this expense, it goes into our work and process asset account, and that cost remains there until I invoice the client for it. Now, if I want that cost to be directly shown in my expenses, I could use the bypass work and process option, uh, or particularly if I'm never going to charge the client, or invoice the client for this expense. Basically, we're just cost of doing business and uh, we wanna track it back to the project but not actually invoice the client for it, then we could use the bypass work and process uh, option here as well. The description, this will be the description of the item, so obviously crafted as such. Uh, Uber transport to client site. Click OK. Whoops. Whenever you're using the cost is non-taxable, obviously you have to have the taxable option set as well. And Design Manager reminded me of that fact. So that's fantastic. Click OK and we are ready to go. Let's say we put this on our American Express. Click OK. And we can go ahead and post. And not only is this going to craft our expense for us, it's now listed on our existing tab. Back in our Hilson project, there is our brand new, uh, our brand new item created automatically for us. And if I want to be consistent with some of my other descriptions here, I may go ahead and input the date of that transaction. And notice below we have our our bill, our charge for the Uber expense itself, a second charge for the taxable markup. Now notice, we're not taxing the cost, but we are taxing our markup on that. And we even have our vendor invoice associated for, um, for the charge with this particular expense. So just by posting that project related operating expenses, Design Manager crafts the item for us, crafts all the necessary components, and links all the accounting to it. That provides absolutely accurate 100% job costing for you, plus providing the vehicle to go ahead and then invoice the client. And speaking of invoicing the client, we might as well. So now we can jump over back to our accounting, our client invoices. I'm going to add an invoice for our Hilson reimbursables. Transaction description, as most of you know, that does not appear on the invoice. That's for internal use only. Uh, how about August reimbursables? Just abbreviate that. Use our tag all to quickly select all of our items. Click OK. And we can go ahead and print and post our invoice. And on this invoice, we've created that conceptual location for reimbursable expenses. And then we can see all of our various reimbursable items for us listed individually. Very clean, very easy, very um, clean, uh, the absolutely uh, clarity of uh, uh, for the client to see exactly what's being charged for them as well. Okay, another option. We may want to have a single reimbursable item into which we join 
all of our reimbursable charges. Now, this is only applicable when we're not itemizing our expenses to the client and they do not need or require to have those individually itemized on the client invoice. We're simply combining them into a single charge for the client. Now, since the expenses are aggregated into a single item, uh, obviously only one sales category can be employed, of course, which makes this very handy for uh, our original methods one and two when we have a very uh, streamlined sales category just for our reimbursable expenses. An example of that we can take a look at under our Carter project again, and we can see item four I've already created for reimbursable expenses. And I can do so at the beginning of the project, uh, or very commonly I've seen uh, firms create them on regular intervals, say once at the uh, beginning of each month for all projects that are ongoing. And when I craft this item uh, to be used to absorb or aggregate the individual charges, it's automatically going to create a component for me, which is completely unnecessary. So I can go ahead and get rid of that if desired. And now I can just see each of my charges. And we can see I've already recorded a meal for lunch for 1025. And I'm going to be accumulating all of these charges into this particular single item. So let's go ahead and add another one to see how it operates. So we'd go back to our accounting, back to our bills and invoices, and very familiar now, we'll go ahead and put in an expense. Now I've created a very generic meals vendor just for such uh, purchases. So if I went out for another lunch that I wanna charge back to the client since I'm on site, I don't need to put in single items, a single uh, vendors for each of the restaurants to which I have eaten. The single meals vendor allows me to kind of utilize a very quick, convenient, and uh, accurate way of recording these charges. <clears throat> Invoice number, let's just say it's something uh, 8718 lunch at site. Save that. Put our invoice date is the same, same as our transaction description. Now my meals vendor already has the meals and entertainment expense account linked with it, as we saw way back uh, when we were talking about our vendors on our defaults tab, but we are using project related. In this case, the sales category isn't even going to matter. We already have an item and we'll see that momentarily. Let's say our lunch was 13.25. We'll select our Hilson project. We're being, uh, again, asked if we want to update our information, sure. But rather than a new item, we're going to use existing item and go ahead and select, oops, item. Oops, wrong project. That's my fault, Carter. There we go. There is our Carter item four. Perfect. Uh, the type again, we can leave set for merchandise. That's absolutely fine. I may want to remove any markup for our lunch reimbursement. Upon doing so, notice that the client price changes to match the cost. Uh, let's say that's not taxable and I have no need to tax any uh, markup. The description here, remember, this will only be our our expense entry itself or the component description. We already have an item description as we'll see momentarily. And we can just go ahead and use the exact same description that we had for our invoice as well. Click okay. And just for convenience, let's say that it's on our American Express. Click okay. And go ahead and post. And now, besides creating the expense itself, design manager is going back into our Carter's project and creating the component for us and is accumulating the cost and price back to the client. 
once we're done with our reimbursable expenses for the period or for the duration of the job, what have you, again, we can go ahead and create the invoice. Let's just use August reimbursable again as our transaction description, select our item and make our invoice. And so now, rather than itemizing all of our different reimbursable expenses, we're just putting one single charge to the client. The client is absolutely fine with that. They don't require any extra detail. They're just going to go ahead and pay you if that's the case with each particular client. Now, we say that, but what if the client then would like a little additional information about all of those charges. If it becomes a, a fairly sizable amount of reimbursable expenses, they may, hey, can you I audit that amount a little bit? Can you provide me some documentation of what uh, has been invoiced to me or what my reimbursable charges are so far? Absolutely. And for that, there's a very special report under our accounts payable reports called our miscellaneous project expense listing. Again, which I've conveniently listed in our, or attached to our favorites menu. So now in this case, let's go ahead and put the Carter's project in there. I can further narrow it down for a particular vendor uh, or a particular uh, date range of the reimbursables themselves. If I'm providing this documentation to the client, I would not want to show actual costs. This is just for my analytics. So I will prevent the costs from being displayed. And I don't want to exclude invoiced items so the client can see all of the charges, whether they've been invoiced or not. And there we go. We can see all charges so far. And notice that when we make our reimbursable expenses uh, for the projects, Design Manager automatically puts some additional information in there, miscellaneous cost of vendor invoice, uh, et cetera. It has a very standardized, uh, almost ledger-like look that we're really tracking all of our charges perfectly. If you want that text to not print on uh, the miscellaneous project expense listing, you can do so just for aesthetics. All that is, is simply the, com the component descriptions themselves. So if we take a look at our reimbursable expense item, all we have to do is remove that verbiage and the report would update automatically for you. Very handy report one for your own internal analysis of reimbursable expenses and two if the client ever wants some initial documentation you have it all right there for them. Now lastly you may there as a methodology where you might have multiple reimbursable items for various genres of expenses. So let's take a look at another reimbursable expense project for our Brigantine Beach Home. There we go. Here I have two examples. I have a reimbursable item for shipping, freight, et cetera, and one for transportation. So I'm going to provide the client with a bit more information upon what my reimbursables were, at least breaking them out between shipping and transportation, uh, yet still aggregating them onto, a, uh, onto the invoice itself. So if we had a parking expense, for example, back to our operating expense window, expenses, I have a generic taxi and parking vendor as well. for our invoice number that's fine 87 again transaction description will maintain consistent click our add button to get to our vendor invoice distribution window and ensure that we click project related our sales category here well we'll be selected when we get our item put our cost in let's say parking was ten dollars Select our Carter's Brigantine Reimbursable Project. 
and we'll join it to our transportation item. Let's remove the markup and ensure that's not taxable. And go ahead and just put our description in for our parking. Click OK. And we can go ahead and post. Very similar to all of our other methods. Once you've crafted the one that works best for you, the entry becomes really second nature. And now on our item on our specifications for that transportation, we can see we've accumulated our parking from a few days back. And now if we go ahead and invoice for our bring a team reimbursables, grab our shipping and freight and our transportation reimbursables and craft our invoice. We can see we're providing the client with a bit more information of where the charges are stemming from versus shipping and transportation, et cetera. Now, I've also seen uh, a methodology where a firm will, on a monthly basis, create items for each of the reimbursable expense categories that's important for them. So they may have an August uh, travel reimbursable, August shipping reimbursable, August professional services reimbursable, etc. They use that as, let's call them bucket items to accumulate the appropriate charges and then invoice on a monthly basis. The following month, process begins again, September transportation, etc a very standardized, very linear, very clear way of uh, charging your clients for all of these reimbursable expenses. And with that, that brings us to the end of our lengthy discussion on operating expenses and reimbursable expenses. Uh, we, in general, operating expenses and reimbursable expenses are fundamentally important to running a sound business. And Design Manager really allows us to easily record these expenses, and I tried to review many methods of categorizing the expenses and different manners to which they can then be invoiced to the client for repayment. With that, I thank you all for joining the discussion today, and I hope you attend another of our free webinars in the near future. Take care and have a great day.